my name's Alon. I'm uh, here to speak about Comet, which is a system that we built at Tesla for uh, collecting, storing, and uh, querying metrics on a massive scale. All right, so um, what did we need when we set out to build our own metric system? First and foremost, as this image of Gigafactory Texas would attest, Tesla is not a small operation, and we generate a massive amount of metrics. So it had to scale. Second, it had to be available. So a Tesla losing metrics has actual real-world physical repercussions potentially. So availability was not negotiable. If, if, a, if you lose metrics during an outage, it's unacceptable. Uh, another thing that we absolutely was not negotiable was retention. Uh, it is very important to us to do long-term analysis on our data. And uh, when I talk about long-term, we're currently unlimited retention. So even months is not enough. We're talking years at this point. Durability is kind of a no-brainer, no right? Like if the system accepts a metric, it has to be there. You cannot lose it if a machine restarts. Speed is obvious, like nobody likes a sluggish dashboard, especially when you're troubleshooting an, uh, an outage. And uh, queryability is kind of a awkward term that I was looking for. Uh, essentially, we want to be able to ask interesting questions about our data and not be limited by a you know, by a simplistic domain-specific language. Uh, we want to be able to do long-term analysis. We want to be able to do uh, forecasting. We want to be able to do anomaly detection. All these things are critical for us. And one requirement that was absolutely non-negotiable was support for PromQL. And the reason why it was non-negotiable is because the target audience for this type of system, which are uh, site reliability engineers mostly, that is the language that they know, that is the language that they prefer, and there is also an, a, a substantial body of existing metrics, excuse, excuse me, uh, existing dashboards, existing alerting rules uh, that nobody wants to re-implement, so we had to support PromQL. So when you say PromQL, the mind immediately goes to Prometheus, and Prometheus is great, but Prometheus is a single server system and thus, it doesn't meet most of these requirements that I just outlined here. You cannot scale it uh, horizontally. There's a limit to how much you can scale vertically. And it also doesn't meet the availability requirements. Uh, because if it's a single server system, if it goes down, you lose your metrics. And that's completely unacceptable. So we set out to build our own. And uh, the most fundamental decision you have to ask yourself when you start building your own system is where is the data going to go? And unsurprisingly, for this audience, the decision was ClickHouse. Um, and why ClickHouse? That is a point that I really want to stress. In our opinion, data in ClickHouse is better than data anywhere else because there is no other system that lets you slice and dice your data and ask interesting questions about it and get answers in acceptable time. There is nothing out there that competes with ClickHouse. So ClickHouse was our decision after evaluating different, you know, multiple other solutions. Um, the obvious reasons are that it just meets all of those requirements that I listed before. You know, every single one of them, every single one of these checkboxes is checked by ClickHouse. We have availability, we have speed, we have durability, uh, we have everything that we would want. There are also some slightly less obvious reasons, uh, such as support for executable UDFs, which was critical for us when we set out to implement PromQL, because not everything is trivial to implement as an SQL statement. That was an excellent escape hatch for us. Um, I'm going to show you a quick demo right now. Uh, it is a recorded demo. It's just going to look like a regular Prometheus Grafana interaction, and that is by design. So the data source is the standard Prometheus data source, no customization, nothing else. You just use it to connect to it. These are our metrics. Uh, I'm going to choose this metric because it just looks more interesting. It's a heat map and everything. And I uh, kind of want to demonstrate how snappy it is. So this is just one hour of data. But even if you zoom out to 24 hours, seven days, you know, it's almost instantaneous. 30 days is slightly more sluggish, but still pretty snappy. And um, I also want to show like kind of an ad hoc query 
rather than you know this prepared dashboard. So I can show you that all of the metadata endpoints that return labels and you know this type of uh, this type of nicety it exists. It all gets it from Comet. Autocomplete works. This is also like a, a Prometheus API query. All of, all of these tooltips, everything here is just loaded in real time from uh, from ClickHouse. And you know we also support these. Uh, hard to implement PromQL functions like rate. You can take the sum of the rate, and then you just get those results immediately. And uh, again, it's pretty, pretty snappy compared to the existing solutions that we were evaluating. And all the niceties of Grafana work. You know, you can uh, you can drag to Zoom. Everything is uh, as a site reliability engineer would expect it to work. Uh, so the architecture is. Uh, for ingest, let's start with ingest. We'll get to queries in a minute. Uh, ingest is done through, similar to my, to my uh, previous colleagues speaking here, open telemetry collectors running, uh, we have you know, tens of thousands of them running. They post their metrics to our uh, Kafka cluster. It's Kafka or any other, any Kafka compatible queue. Uh, we have a flock of ETL processes running there. Their job is to just uh, consume from the Kafka queue and uh, convert the OTLP metrics to just to click out inserts. Batch them up pretty aggressively. You know, each batch is you know, with, uh, measured in the millions. And then they get inserted into ClickHouse. So that's, in, that's ingest. It's a very scalable pipeline. We'll talk numbers in a second. This is the query path. Um, we can focus on the middle prong here with uh, Grafana. So the way that it works is the Grafana server or any other PromQL API client just issues a, prom it's a very standard Prometheus API PromQL query. It hits Comet. Comet has a component and it. Uh, it's a transpiler. So a transpiler is a source to source translator. The input of this transpiler is PromQL and the output is ClickHouse SQL. And we generate it dynamically, issue the SQL query against ClickHouse and then we format the the data that's returned from ClickHouse as Prometheus API JSON. And it gets returned to the Grafana dashboard and you know, nobody has any idea that, there was, that this wasn't just a standard Prometheus environment. And uh, the other things I wanted to kind of uh, point out is you know, the bottom prong there is an alerting subsystem. Again, Prometheus compatible. All it does is similar to the dashboard, issues uh, Prometheus API queries against Comet and there are alerting rules, which are exactly the alerting rules used in Prometheus, PromQL queries. And if a, you know, they test conditions, and if a condition is met, or violated rather, it can trigger alerts. You know, it can fire alerts on any of the standard alerting integrations, like Ops Genie, for example. One last thing I wanted to go over is the, the top part. This is our test suite. It's also a Comet API uh, client. What it does is it populates an instance of Prometheus and an instance of Comet issues the same PromQL query against both of them, and then makes an assertion that the return value from both of these systems is byte for byte identical. So we have almost 1,000 tests running, and that's why we can say with confidence that we are Prometheus compatible at this point. Um, some numbers, because everybody likes numbers. Um, Right now, uh, we are onboarding multiple customers at a time, so our system is not yet at fully load. We're currently ingesting tens of millions of rows a second. Um, in terms of unique time series, because each row, like rows are samples, time series are a higher uh, level from that. You know, a single time series has many samples in it. So we have tens of billions of time series that we've accumulated over time. That right there is already a problem with systems that are competing with Comet because they are super sensitive to, to high cardinality time series. And uh, in terms of samples, right now we, we have tens of trillions of samples. And we are very confident that the system can scale much higher than this. And the reason why we're so confident is because we've actually load tested it. And we ran a, a very uh, challenging load test on this system. And we scaled it up to one billion rows a second of insertion. And we let that thing run for days and days and days. And that's how, uh, how we got this um, impressive number, which uh, is not something that you see every day, I bet. Thank you. 
And this thing just ran for 11 days, a billion rows a second, not a single, not a single hiccup, not a single issue. Memory was flat, CPU consumption was flat. It was just like a thing of beauty to behold. Um, all right, what's next for us? Uh, the next thing, it's actually not really the next thing, it's already current, is we've already implemented support for traces and traceQL using a similar architecture, the transpiler. It's a simpler problem than PromQL because it's a simple language. And uh, hopefully, uh, there is a very good chance that this thing can uh, go open source pretty soon. So if we're able to do that, um, everybody here could take a test drive. Thank you. All right. Uh, one last thing I wanted to do is I really wanted to thank some of the fantastic uh, ClickHouse core team members. In, in particular, I wanted to thank uh, Sasha Gololobov, uh, Ilya Yatsishin, and Nikita Mikhailov, who presented right before me, and really everyone else working on ClickHouse. You are building a just fantastic product, and it makes my project possible. So thank you so much, and uh, we're hiring. Mm -hmm.